Hey everybody, welcome back to Red Bug Music. I'm Brian. I hope you're doing well today. I'm doing pretty good. I actually having a nice day uh, so far. Uh, what we're going to start doing, I'm so excited. We're going to uh, be ranking Led Zeppelin's uh, studio album starting today. Uh, this was something that I, uh, I asked the, the viewer, uh, the subscriber, you know, what should we do next? And I got a lot of Led Zeppelin rankings and also in some Facebook groups. Uh, there was a lot of interest in Led Zeppelin, and I, I, I want nothing more but to uh, dive into a band like Led Zeppelin and just get a much deeper understanding and idea of what their music was like and 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 how great of musicians these four guys were. And I've, I've always listened to Led Zeppelin, but I've never really gotten that deep into them. Uh, so this is a really good opportunity for me. So just to start out... Led Zeppelin is an English rock band uh, consisting of Robert Plant, Jimmy Page, uh, John Paul Jones, and John Bonham. And basically what they were was a, a folk band that just got way out of hand. I mean, really, it, it, they just went nuts. I mean, they actually, uh, their music actually consisted of like hard rock, blues, folk rock. I've even heard the term metal. And uh, I'm okay with that, but a lot of acoustic, uh, just... Uh, a, a big array, a wide array of, of, of different music types. They existed between the years of 1968 and 1980. And uh, Led Zeppelin's probably one of the most recognized, influential, successful bands of all time. And they wrote music with constantly changing time signatures and musical experimentation. And each of the band members um, were geniuses in regards to their own instrument, including Robert Plant, uh, with his uh, extraordinary vocals and his ability to tell a story with his uh, with his uh, uh, lyric writing. Uh, I mean, this band was really extraordinary. I'm more than thrilled to be covering Led Zeppelin, listening and reviewing each track and album. This is going to be an amazing experience for me, and hopefully for you as well. Uh, so today we're going to start with our least ranked album. And before we get into that, I, I don't know if you noticed the album uh, back here. We're going to have another get, uh, album giveaway for subscribers. So just like with Van Halen, all you got to do is just uh, um, tell me who you think the uh, best album is going to be. No, this one back here is not necessarily it, and it's not necessarily not it. This is just an album that I thought that I enjoy and I thought that everybody would enjoy and it's brand new and just like the Van Halen that Shannon Brooks won it's been remastered so it's going to sound fantastic so uh, just just like before just give me some comments uh, on, on on this video and on the uh, videos going forward one time just let me know which album do you think is going to be the number one there's no right answers there's no wrong answers uh, it's just uh, that's just how you're going to enter into the contest. And then I'm going to have a drawing at the end and we'll, we'll pick a winner. Um, so today we're starting with, with the album Coda. Coda came out in 1982 and this was two years after John Bonham had died. And uh, it was really for a contractual obligation to Atlanta records. And, and again, it's just a collection of unused songs that span their entire career. And again, I thought I wasn't going to include this, but come to find out, Atlanta Re Atlantic Records did consider this a studio album, and it did fulfill uh, that obligation. So I'm like, well, let's go ahead and throw it in. It's going to be last, and it has to be last because this is not an actual album. There's no concept. There's no flow. There's no, you know, there were no uh, ideas on how this album should sound, or you know, it, this is just thrown together stuff of leftovers and outtakes and actually live footage that you may not know. And uh, and I just thought this would be a good place to start. Let's not leave Coda out. So Coda, the name itself, is a music term uh, that I remember back in band. Uh, it, it's, it's a term that means it's a passage that brings a piece or movement to an end. So for a band like Led, Ze Led Zeppelin that pretty much reinvented the musical wheel, this was a perfect name for their very last album. So I, I 
this is great. I love it. So let's go ahead and get into the album. Let's talk about track by track. Now, the thing about Led Zeppelin, all except for one album, they don't have that many tracks, like seven songs, eight songs. And this one just has eight. So we'll just go through them real quick. And I'll try to not be so wordy, but I do want to talk about each song, especially on this album, because it was, you know, like uh, just a bunch of stuff thrown in from different uh, um from different times of their career. Uh, the first one is called We're Gonna Groove. Now this album version came from a live performance with guitars overdubbed and was used in many concerts in the 70s. Um, they planned on putting the song on Led Zeppelin II, but actually never did. And uh, it's basically a fast paced, exciting song that would have been perfect to start a show. And uh, I think it was a really good way to start this album because this is a really good intro. So even though this is a, uh, just a bunch of songs thrown in. This is a great start. So we're going to groove. Good, good start. And then the next song is called Poor Tom. Poor Tom was intended for Led Zeppelin 3, and it's a drum-driven song with an acoustic guitar and a simple bass line. It's enjoyable, but I think it's a little thin, and I can, I can see why it didn't get uh, added to the album. And it has a really cool harmonica. Um, then song number three is I Can't Quit You, Baby. Now... Uh, this is taken from that same concert from We're Gonna Groove, and they took all of the live crowd out, and actually, uh, it's a very nice, slow, grinding, gritty, bluesy groove that actually came from Led Zeppelin 1, it was actually on that album. And that solo by Page is crazy good, and it just keeps going and keeps going. Um, and the drum outro is great, but I'm not sure why they decided to put that song on this album since it was already on an album. I don't know, but it's, it's it's nice. It's enjoyable. Now, the next song is called Walter's Walk. This one was actually left off of Houses of the Holy. It's a great sounding song, and but I see why they left it off. Uh, it's got a very heavy guitar sound with lots of overdubs throughout, and uh, it's got great heavy drums too. And I kind of wonder, I mean, I, I can see why they left it off because it, it, it just seems like a very heavy I don't mean to say heavy, but I can't think of another word. Just a, it's a very heavy sound, so I think maybe it was just a little too much for Houses of the Holy. So, But uh, the fact that it didn't make it to another album is, is kind of curious. But uh, the next song is called Ozone Baby. Uh, this is an outtake from In Through the Outdoor. And I love that start. It's great musically, uh, but I think the lyrics weren't that strong. Too many oohs, <laughs> in my opinion. He says that so many times, it kind of gets on my nerves. Uh, so I'm glad that they left that out, but I'm glad it's on this album. And then the next song is Darlene, talking about say, saying something way too many times. Darlene is another In Through the Outdoor outtake, uh, and it sounds like the song, that the lyrics just didn't amount to the standards they were, they were looking up to. And again, he says Darlene so many times. Um, so good choice taking that out, but... I mean, all these songs that are on this album, I'm glad they're there. and I'm glad we had the chance to listen to them, but I'm just glad they didn't make it to the uh, intended album. I mean, In Through the Outdoor, I mean, it probably could have used some help. I mean, it's not a really a great album. But uh, anyway, Bonzo's Mantra, uh, that's the seventh track on the album. Now, that was recorded in 1976 and basically a drum solo by John, John Bonham. And I would say that's a perfect addition to this album. Basically, has a tribute to John Bonham because he had passed away in 1980. Uh, but that's what this was, track number seven. And then track number eight, and also the last track, is called Wearing and Tearing. Uh, this was recorded in 1978 by Led Zeppelin as an attempt to uh, compete with the newer punk bands uh, that were coming onto the scene. It was, And it was supposed to be released as a single, but it was like canceled at the last minute so they ended up not doing it but they just wanted to hang you know because you know the 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 whole scene was kind of revolving it was changing and bands like led zeppelin were kind of being seen as you know old you know has-beens or becoming that so they were just saying we can do it just as good as you do and wearing and tearing is a good example of that and a great uh, end to this album. So that's it. That's Coda. That's going to be the ninth ranked uh, album uh, for you. Now, my analysis, I've made some notes here. For outtakes, this isn't a bad collection of songs, but there's no way Coda would have made it any higher in the rankings just because 
it's just a bunch of songs thrown together with without any purpose or any reason just just as an obligation to Atlantic Records uh, but at least it does start with a really good song like uh, We're Gonna Groove. I think that's a really good thing. And one thing I really want to pay close attention to is Jimmy Page's guitar style. Just like I did with Eddie Van Halen, I, I pretty much considered Eddie Van Halen the best guitarist ever. And uh, as of right now, I'm sticking with that. Uh, and I'm going to be paying attention to Jimmy Page. Now, what I've noticed so far with Jimmy Page is uh, he is he is the best I mean, he is absolutely, he, he pretty much drove the music behind Led Zeppelin. He he wrote this music and then um, uh, Robert Plant did the lyrics. So pretty much everything you hear was was written by uh, Paige. So he's an extremely musically talented person you know, that, that can write a song really well. And his riffs are fabulous. They're just magnificent. But I noticed with his guitar style, it seems... Uh, to not be as much finesse, but rather seem, he seemed to like attack the guitar note by note. And he played with so much precise aggression. Uh, that's what I'm noticing so far. I'll be paying attention to that and, and, be, and I'll be commenting on that. Because, you know, if I consider him to be a better guitarist than Eddie Van Halen, I'm going to definitely say that. But so far, I'm not sure because, again, this is outtakes and we're not going to go by that. Uh, we're going to go by, you know, what actually made it to these other albums. So, but that's going to be it for today. I appreciate you hanging out with me. To, uh, I'm, I'm so excited about the launch of the Led Zeppelin rankings. Uh, and today, again, we cover the number nine, uh, which was Coda. And uh, come back next week, and we'll 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 hit the number eight. And uh, comment down below. Tell me what you think about this album. If you like it, if you didn't like it, and uh, if you're excited about you know what's coming ahead. Uh, but again, you can uh, follow my website, which I'm going to update that today. Redmugmusic.com. I'm on Instagram at Redmugmusic. Facebook, Facebook.com forward slash Redmugmusic. Just everything Redmugmusic. I'm even actually going to be looking into Pinterest to see if I can. Uh, get something going on there as well. But again, it was great hanging out with you guys today. I hope I see you again next week.